it's a lot like riding a bike where, you know, you, once you learn how to do it, you never forget. Your body's trying to find solid ground. That's what you're used to, you know, the predictable surface called planet Earth. I mean, when you step on a line, you can literally see the oscillations go down the line and come back at you. Slacklining is a multitude of things. It is a balanced sport. It is also a huge form of active meditation. And it's kind of a way of seeing the direct relationship between the frequency of human beings and their moods. You have to picture like this ball of energy starting at your feet and it's trying to exit through your body. So if you're stiff, it will knock you off the line. If you're more fluid with your motion, that's when you can let it pass through you instead of against you. You need to teach your body to do lots of practice to accept that motion of action and reaction and just change those, uh, you know, that mindset that you have. But if you've never done it before and you go up there and stand on it, it's like when you're a baby trying to stand up for the first time, you know? The world got crazy and shaky and you fell over. So it's kind of getting that, like, childhood challenge again. So I got on the slack line and immediately just, it, it grabbed my attention like nothing ever has. I think slacklining helps you in so many different ways. Self-confidence, it's a great cross trainer for other sports. Um, it helps you with agility, it helps you with mind control, just breathing, focusing. I've gotten stronger, I've gotten more focused. I've developed a way to control my mind, to control my emotions. It's a feeling that again, I can't explain. You have to go out and try it. Slacklining is definitely taking some major leaps and bounds. Um, the sport is growing so fast, it's hard to keep up with. So tricklining is, is something that has evolved from the traditional sport, and um, it's definitely picking up a lot of momentum. a lot of butt bounces, chest bounces, spins, flips, difficulty of the trips, the height, the amplitude, style, just technique. Then there's the long lining, which can really be classified as what's long to you. When you first start out, 10 feet feels long. And then once you conquer that, 30 feet feels long. But there's guys out there who 500 feet is not that long. And it's like to set up a slack line under a bridge, you have new variables added to it that make it more difficult, more challenging, and more kind of pleasing in your mind when you can complete it and, and relax and get into that flow. <laughs> After long lining, I think a high lining came around. To me, a high line is any time that you have to leash up to the line. If, if the fall has potential to kill you, I mean, you leash up, and in my eyes, that's a high line. Really, again, it's just simple. It's really just trying to cultivate that fear that's just going through your head. You know, it's not about getting rid of the fear, it's about managing it. You know, not letting the uh, excitement or panic get to you. It's very scary because millions of years have told basic instinct in all animals, stay away from this cliff. And highlining is step off the cliff. You know, it's completely counterintuitive. 
as exciting as, as a backflip may be or walking a high line, walking between two trees is just as, as exciting as it was the very first day I tried it. And that's why I love slacklining so much. And slacklining is a perfect metaphor for life. It's putting one foot in front of the other.